What's up folks, this is your boy Darko. Welcome to another edition of Kindles and Kicks. Okay, so this week, African Americans and other races across the country are celebrating Juneteenth, which commemorates a very special time in history, two years following the Emancipation Proclamation when Union soldiers were traveling around America letting slaves know they were free, and they finally made it to Texas, which was one of the last states to honor the Emancipation Proclamation. And so Juneteenth includes all kind of celebrations, parties, presentations, all honoring this special moment in black history and American history. So I got to thinking, what is a good way for a booktuber like myself to honor this particular day in my history? And I figured I'd do a video I've been planning to do for a long time, and that's list my top 10 black characters in science fiction and fantasy. Considering that there's still a lack of diversity in much of fantasy and science fiction, I feel like it's my duty to take the opportunity whenever necessary to highlight characters of color. And so I think today or this week is a good time to do that. All right, so here we go. Number 10. Number 10 is Belina Luna. I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. Belina Luna is a character in Ryan Cahill's series, The Bound and the Broken. And she is a badass chick. Um, considering the setting of The Bound and the Broken is very traditional, kind of medievally. When I saw this beautiful black lesbian hop on the screen with all the fierceness in the world, I was thoroughly engrossed even more so than I had been before. Now, even though she never has a direct POV, at least not yet in the series, whenever she's on the page, she steals the show. She's entertaining, she's humorous, she's intelligent, and she is just a bad-ass warrior chick, and I love reading about her whenever she's on the page. Belina Luna, if you're reading Bound in the Broken, you know who I'm talking about, and I hope you love her just as much as I do. Number nine is Zamira, I'm hoping, it's either Zamira or Zamira who is another badass chick in the Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch. Yo, not only is she a pirate, she is a single mother of two. So I have to applaud Scott Lynch on breaking every single pirate stereotype that could be broken. Cause usually you think of like the peg leg, scraggly haired white dude with the eye patch. No, this chick is fierce, brown skin, beautiful black broad with two children she's caring for while, while still captaining a pirate ship. And she is in, she makes an appearance in the second book of the General Ambassadors, Red Skies Under Red Seas. And she is very essential to the plot. And I just think she enhances the story in every way. It's one of the reasons I actually think the second book is better than the first book in the General Ambassador series, even though most readers tend to disagree with that. But with Zamira or Zamira, Man, she makes that book, and there's no argument. All right, so number eight is Binti. Now, I read the first book in this series, and I thought it was pretty good, but I did really appreciate the main character, Binti, mainly because I've been in circumstances where I am the oddball out, or I'm 
phenotypically or racially or ethnically or socioeconomically unique compared to everyone else in a particular space. And that book and her character really highlights how difficult situations like that can be to navigate when you're the absolute only person like yourself inside of a room or inside of a class, inside of a business, or even inside of your own home, how that can sometimes cause conflict, it can cause uncertainty. And this book and her character, to me, handled that very well and presented that in a very smart way for every reader. So yeah, I absolutely love that character. Number seven is Stephen Black from Susanna Clark's book, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. He is one of the main characters in that novel. And he he is like a butler slash assistant slash intelligent, smart guy. But he's often caught in between the conflicts of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And then there's another character who just kinds of kind of puts him through the ringer and he has such a uh, sophistication to him and I love how the way the way he was presented and he comments and showcases European racism or at least English racism so often at least from my rearing I learned about how blacks were treated in America, but never anywhere else in the world. So it was a very interesting perspective to see this character, Stephen Black, encounter racial issues over across the pond. So, and and I just love him. He His dialogue is always great. Um, he always gets a chuckle out of me. And I just, and and the what happens to him in the story to me is just it's just wonderfully scripted, wonderfully crafted, and I just love Susanna Clark for uh, putting this character in a book because he really does enhance everybody he in, in, interacts with. So Stephen Black, number six is my boy Kip from the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. Now, I have not completed this entire series. I've read the first two books, which I've enjoyed. I've wanted to revisit it, but I'm a little hesitant because a lot of people don't like the way it ended. But in any case, I loved Kip immediately because Kip is me and I am Kip. Like when I was a kid, I was the chubby, kind of bubbling class clown not really taken seriously until I had to endure certain things in my life that forced me to grow up and become accountable and so that changed me and made me into a into a better man and into the person I am today and to see that in Kip and enjoy his journey right along with him was just um, so special and one of the best things about uh, the Lightbringer series. Now, now I'm not going to say he's black. I mean, the way he's described in the book, his skin tone and his features seems to be, you know, he's black. But and I feel like if there was ever a film done for Lightbringer, I feel like a black guy would play Kip. I think he is awesome and one of the best characters in fantasy. So number five is from the book Paranesi, also by Susanna Clark. So the main character in this book, slight spoiler, I guess, I don't know, you'll learn eventually is mixed race. He's biracial. His father or one of his parents are African and another of his parents are European. And you'll learn that in the book. But, you know, in America, if you have black in you, we call you black. Like you can be black and white. You can be black mixed with Indian, black mixed with um, Irish. But much like Barack Obama, who is a biracial figure, everyone always says he's the first 
black president, not the first mixed race president. So um, not to in any way discredit the intersectionality of race and ethnicity. Um, I'm just applying the logic I've learned in America. But um, to be fair, the character in Piranesi is biracial, biracial or mixed race. But I'm just using American logic and calling him, calling him black. And I was just astonished like when I after reading this story learning that he was a person of color and again this is one of the best books I've read in a very long time I don't want to give away much of why I like the character I just thought he was tremendously engaging he was entertaining and his journey while traumatic is also very rewarding and i i just liked him as a pov through the entire story so sorry i can't share his name because that would be more of a spoiler um particularly for um some booktubers so i will let you all read and learn those of you who've already read it know it but anyway Piranesi, main character in there my fifth favorite black character number four and you know i could not have had a list without this guy this is my dude ben a phelan de lot my man quick ben from malazan book of the fallen this guy is one of the greatest characters written in any genre of literature he is a badass, I'm using badass a lot, but anyway, he is a badass, quick-witted, resourceful, highly intelligent mage slash wizard slash sorcerer in the Malazan series, and he is essentially untouchable. He brings gods to their knees. He has super powerful wizards like trembling in fear yo the dude is off the chain and he has a very special relationship with another um character kalam i think that's how you pronounce it i'm probably wrong um i'm in the middle of dead house gates right now and i and I'm in. I'm loving Dead House Gates, but I do miss my boy Quick Ben. I mean, he is to me one of the funniest and one of the most awesome characters that Steven Erickson has created, at least that I've encountered so far in the series. So we'll see what happens, though. But yeah, Quick Ben, that's my boy. Number three is Anansi who is heavily featured in American Gods by Neil Gaiman. The funny thing is, I fell in love with this character by watching the show. So, you know, I hadn't even read the book yet, but the way he, I think, was it, is it Orlando Brown or Orlando Jones? It's one of them. He played Anansi so well in that story, in the show. And then when I read the book, you know... I just became even more captivated by the character, but more so is that it introduced me to West African theology or mythology, which I didn't know about. So often we're taught about the ancient Roman gods or the ancient Greek gods, but who knew that West Africa had their own gods? And he's like the trickster, you know, um, he's like the Loki of West Africa. And that meant a lot to me, especially considering that my father is West African. And although I don't have a relationship with him specifically, I felt deeper, deep, more deeply connected to my roots by learning about West African mythology because and Nancy's character was just a gateway into me, like delving more into that. And I appreciated um, the show and Neil Gaiman for introducing me to another part of myself that I had no idea existed. So, yeah, Nancy, love him. Number two is Dana from the book Kindred. Um, as some of you may know, that book really touched home specifically through the main character Dana and how she so 
amazingly and sophisticatedly, I don't even know that's a word, but so graciously handled being a slave or being enslaved after living in modern times. The book takes place in like the 70s, way after slavery had ended, you know, a century after slavery had ended. And for her to have to go back there and endure it with, you know, with, with passion and with an eagerness to help others, not sure how many of us would have handled being thrown back in time in that type of situation so well. So I really loved her character and I look forward to reading more Octavia Butler because, oh my gosh, that was quite a memorable read. Who's my number one favorite sci-fi or fantasy black character? My number one guy, my homie, my dude, my friend, my man, my ace. Dean Thomas. So, like, y'all don't understand, like, being a kid and reading Harry Potter, and like, so a lot of the books I read as a kid, unless it was something my mother purchased for me that was directly targeted toward, like, a young African American boy, most of the books I read didn't have black characters in them, they were heavily white leaning. Which, you know, it's gotten better over the years, thankfully. But there wasn't a lot of access to books with black characters. There wasn't a lot available, I should say, when I was growing up. So, when I got, you know, when I was like 13, 14, and I discovered Harry Potter. And there's like this kid who is a wizard and is Harry's, you know, good friend. And one of the main characters... And he's black and he loves soccer, even though at that time I was more of a football guy. But, you know, still, hey, football, American football anyway. And, like, I just connected to him immediately. And it was just so refreshing and so uplifting to see a black character, especially a young black boy, in such a popular book and then continue to be um, written into the series throughout so i really appreciated jk rowling for that so yeah my number one guy always and forever i'm sure will be dean thomas and i think most people within my age group who grew up with harry potter can very much understand why all right okay so happy juneteenth everybody that was my top 10 list of favorite black characters in science fiction and fantasy hope you enjoyed it let me know if you have any favorites even even if they aren't black like just favorite characters of color throughout science fiction and fantasy i'd be happy to know this is darko kindles and kicks like comment subscribe i'll see you next time peace Hello. This is Caleb.